Hey, good afternoon. It's a bit. It's Friday in the early afternoon, and remember that we talked about the on November 11, 13 celestial lineup being reflected by the elite on Earth in Paris and New York, and how that connected to Mary Magdalene, the Notre Dame being the physical representation of her on uh, in the Paris area. So. There's more going on with regard to that story. That story is not over yet. So we talked about them, the elite, saying peace, security, and then sudden destruction. And if we look at what is going on in the heavens, um, I think I've been given a little bit more detail to share with you and then a follow-up of what a destruction kind of scenario would look like. So last night was the conjunction um, between the moon and Venus. And like that conjunction, the subsequent conjunction of the moon with the planet Mercury, the messenger or, or chief speaker, um, that happens below the horizon as well. So they are not visible, but they're knowable events. And we're actually seeing the moon, the veiled bride, being birthed out of Virgo in the heavens right now. And we know that one of the layered meanings of Virgo, in addition to it representing um, Mary giving birth to Jesus, then the birth of the church is the um, type of Mary Magdalene, but also the heavenly Jerusalem. So we're seeing a birthing scenario of the moon, the veiled bride, in the heavenly Jerusalem. And November 13th is also the start of the commemoration of the end of Noah's flood on the 27th of Chesphan. And meanwhile, the Lord is sparkling above us in the Taurus constellation. That is the celestial silver gate, the gate of man. In addition to uh, the constellation Leo. Um, so he's highlighting both constellations while these conjunctions are taking place. And what I didn't add um, in the former video is that Mars is stationary today. So it actually ends its retrograde motion um, and it's going to go in its prograde or forward motion. While Mars is associated with war, also with the Archangel Michael. And that could be a possible indicator of war no longer being held back, um, in the heavens at least. Um, but moving forward. So in the scriptures we find a reference to Michael standing up and the time of trouble starting. We find that in the book of Daniel chapter 12. So I believe this is what is happening above us today. And Comet Atlas, a representation of the burden bearer, the type of the Lord being yoked unto us, is in the constellation Orion in his uh, for us, it is visually the right arm. For him, it's his left. Um, at the slain lion. So, to confirm that the Lord has already overcome the enemy. And um, it will be closest to the earth uh, tomorrow, November 13th. 14th, sorry. And the day afterward, the moon will be hidden in the sun's glare. And that happens in the beautiful location of the altar of redemption. So the sun will outshine uh, both the moon and comet Neowise, and um, that takes place in Libra. We know that constellation to be shaped as a Scorpio, but biblically these are the four horns of the altar of redemption. And Pluto, which is the ruler of the underworld, um, or Hades, associated with Hades, conjuncts with Jupiter. And that is in the celestial golden gate underneath or next to Ophiuchus. And that represents the gate of the gods. So now we come to today's portion. I entitled it, On Earth as it is in Heaven. So just before our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he had taught his disciples about himself as the bridegroom, assuring them of his return unto them after their betrothal supper, the Last Supper. Mary, the hidden bride type, had anointed Jesus unto burial. She foreknew the fate of her spiritually espoused. We even read that she unbraided her hair, and that was considered scandalous to do that, 
other than in the privacy of um, being with one's own husband. And I believe the scripture mentions it um, for different reasons, one of them being that she foreknew what would happen, but she also knew that she was the bride type and Jesus was her spiritual husband. So we know that many have distorted their interaction relationship uh, in very different ways, but I believe she is the spiritual bride type of the end times church. So riding into Jerusalem, the Lord found a people faithfully watching and waiting, having taken off their own mantle for his glorious covering. Her, their palms were raised up high. Their passionate cry went out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. So they recognized him for being not only their savior and groom, but the savior of Israel as well. And when the faithful remnant stood at the foot of the cross later, seeing Jesus pierced to the almond tree as the Father's most precious first fruit of the garden's tree of life, him being ruthlessly crowned with very deeply piercing thorns, they saw Pilate's note placed above his sacred wounded body, mocking him, saying, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And yet the Spirit speaks to us when we are in such dismay and pain. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. I believe that is what he's, he is saying to us today. O Jerusalem, where our bridegroom suffered for our redemption, so we can be birthed into heaven, into the heavenly Jerusalem one day. As we look up into the heavens tomorrow at dawn, I wrote it yesterday, so that was this morning, sorry, we can see the veiled moon bride being birthed out of Virgo, reflective of the heavenly Jerusalem, before she disappears into the bridegroom's rays, as the sun will be at the altar of redemption, Libra, commemorating in the heavens where he triumphed on our behalf, and it's also the end of the moon cycle. So I understand that she will finish her race with the bridegroom at the altar of redemption tomorrow. So here we see the lineup cross-shaped of the moon being burst out of the upper body section, the torso of Virgo, lining up with Spica and then progressing further southward to the conjunction with Mercury tonight. And then tomorrow, um, November 14th, the moon darkened will meet up in the sun's glare at the altar of redemption. And the asterism is the reflection of the four point horns of the altar. So if we go into scripture a little bit deeper, I believe that Micah 4 actually unlocks that Mary Magdalene was both the stronghold of the daughter of Zion those uh, a type of the people who will be raptured and Mary taking a position of a stronghold, a watchtower within that construct. Micah 4, chap, uh, verse 6, In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast far off, a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, the heavenly Jerusalem, even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, and we know from previous studies that Mary Magdalene is a representation of the tower of the flock. O thou, tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So, understanding that Mary is the watchtower, the Migdal, Magdala, that was her connotation, the given name, um, we see that she is connected to the daughter of Zion. 
Isaiah 1 8 and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city so she is a fortress and as a watchtower over the flock she looks over the Lord's sheep um, remember that the watchtower in Jerusalem was the place where Jesus was born as well the place where the sacrificial lambs were prepared unto sacrifice in the temple and she is also guarding the fruits of the field. So that is what the type of the watchtower, what Mary Magdalene represents in the scriptures, to my understanding. Lamentation 2.13 What things shall I take to witness for thee? What things shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea, who can heal thee? So we know that the virgin in this case is a spiritual uh, um, attribute of those who have made themselves ready, just like in the first three books of the book of Revelation. Psalms 914, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. So once breached, even lost, the Lord has healed the rift and saved her. Zechariah 2.10 Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 6.23 They shall lay hold on bow and spear, they are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses, set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. The stronghold of the daughter of Zion is familiar with spiritual warfare from within and without. Isaiah 62, 11, Behold, the Lord has proclaimed until the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And then Zechariah 9, 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation, he lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass and that was the um the way kings traveled in times of peace as opposed to traveling on a horse zephaniah chapter 3 14 sing o daughter of zion shout o israel be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He has cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let, no, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will, he will joy over thee with singing. And then verse 18, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will do unto all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. So the daughter of Zion has been delivered, the breach has been healed, she has been strengthened unto good works, unto um, guarding over the flock, guarding over the fruit, being, being a strong tower in the midst of the Lord's people but also extending outward to the world. And I'm going to uh, download a beautiful recording for you uh, of this song. It's entitled Daughter of Zion. And afterward, I'm going to give you some insight with regard to the enemy signaling for today and tomorrow, which may give us a little bit of insight as to how the scenario of sudden destruction, how that could look like. So. I hope to see you in the next.